At only a few inches long and with no distinguishing external physical features to speak of, Scusatorex Somareni, better known as the Hero or Armored Shrew, is seemingly an unremarkable creature. That is, until you accidentally step on one. You see, the Hero Shrew can comfortably survive being stood on by a typical adult human without any injury. The secret to this remarkable skill lies in the Shrew's skeletal system, or more specifically, its spine. Unlike almost every other mammal on Earth, with one notable exception, which we'll get to in a moment, the Hero Shrew spine features intricate interlocking vertebrae, a very large number of spinal processes, and is incredibly thick relative to its size. Indeed, the weight of its spine accounts for roughly 4% of its total body weight, or about 6 to 8 times higher than mammals of comparable size. As a final insult to other, lesser shrews, the Hero Shrew's spine also contains more than twice as many lumbar vertebrae, 10 to 11 instead of 5, giving the little guy significantly more flexibility than its peers, allowing the Hero Shrew to turn around in much tighter quarters than its brethren can. What makes this adaption even more unusual is that most of the rest of the Hero Shrew's skeleton, aside from slightly beefier ribs, doesn't follow suit and is not all that different from other small mammals. However, as alluded to previously, in some of the earliest reports of encounters with this creature in its native habitat of the forests of certain regions of Africa, researchers such as German naturalist Herbert Lang noted that whenever the Mangbetu have a chance, they take great delight in showing to the easily fascinated crowd its extraordinary resistance to weight and pressure. After the usual hubbub of various invocations, a full-grown man weighing some 160 pounds, that's 72 kilograms, steps barefooted upon the shrew, steadily trying to balance himself upon one leg, he continues to vociferate several minutes. The poor creature seems certainly to be doomed, but as soon as his tormentor jumps off, the shrew, after a few shivering movements, tries to escape, none the worse for this mad experience, and apparently in no need of the wild applause and exhortations from the throng. For reference, the man in this story weighed around a thousand times more than a typical hero shrew. This would be like having a Boeing 757 balanced on top of a typical adult male if humans could perform the same feat scaled up. Although the Mangbetu have known about the Hero Shrew's remarkable resilience to pressure for centuries, when British zoologist Oldfield Thomas became the first Western expert to encounter one back in 1910, he didn't notice that there was anything unusual about it. In fact, Oldfield described the creature as being rather uninteresting, only noting that it was slightly larger than an average shrew and had quite dense fur. The shrew's remarkable spine wasn't observed by academics for another seven years when a curator at the Natural History Museum stumbled upon a preserved specimen and wrote a paper about it called The Skeletal Characteristics of Scutosaurus Thomas. Since its discovery until very recently, experts were baffled about exactly why the hero shrew evolved in the way that it did, with there being no obvious explanation for why its spine needs, or needed, to be as strong as it is. There was also more or less a missing link between the spines of a typical shrew and the exceptionally different spine of the hero shrew. The latter point was initially explained by perhaps being an example of punctuated equilibrium, a theory that posits that under just the right circumstances, a subset of some members of a species can evolve rapidly in response to a threat or change in environment, while the rest of the species that aren't experiencing the same environmental pressures may stay more or less the same. Once the rapidly evolving group adapts to the environmental pressures, it also more or less stays the same in this new form, with the rapid scale and isolation of the events leaving little record of the transition. However, quite recently, the potential missing link was found. In 2012, William Stanley and his team, acting on behalf of the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, encountered a close relative of this remarkable shrew species in a small African village in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Like the hero shrew, this new species, named Scutosaurus thor, sported an unusually thick spine consisting of interlocking vertebrae. Unlike the hero shrew, though, this new species only had eight lumbar vertebrae, three more than regular shrews, but three less than the hero shrew. It also had fewer and bigger spinal processes, a little more like a typical mammalian spine. Essentially, this spine is more or less halfway between a hero shrew's and a typical shrew in its form. After analyzing the new species of shrew's DNA, the researchers found that, indeed, they are closely related to the hero shrew. As to why 
this evolution would have taken place, during his time in the Congo, Stanley was told by locals that the best place to find hero shrews was in swampy palm forests, where beetle larva and other such creatures can often be found under dead palm leaves, branches, and other things like that. After watching the natives pry up such things to expose large grubs for harvesting, he logically hypothesized that the reason this new shrew, and by extension its sister species, had evolved such strong backs and spinal muscles, as well as thicker ribs, was because it allowed them to pry up branches and other such objects enough to expose the grubs that the shrews like to eat, all without risking any injury. This gives these shrews a significant biological advantage over other shrews in certain regions. However, according to Stanley, no one has seen the shrew actually do this, so it remains just a very reasonable sounding theory. And now for a bonus fact. If you thought the hero shrew was impressive, let us now introduce you to a creature able to survive being boiled in water, frozen to just one degree above absolute zero, survive atmospheric pressure equivalent to about six times the pressure at the deepest part of the ocean, or on the flip side, a complete lack of atmospheric pressure in space. They can also survive near total dehydration and exposure to massive amounts of ionizing radiation. On top of that, they can also go dormant and live for as much as a century in this state, just waiting for a drop of water to rejuvenate them. So, what mighty creature is this? Well, it turns out it would be one that would make Ant-Man look giant, as the water bear, or more aptly, tardigrades, from the Latin tardigradus, meaning slow walker, are only about the size of a grain of sand. There are over a thousand known species of water bears, called such because when they walk their gait loosely resembles plump little bears ambling along on eight legs. And these creatures thrive in the most extreme environments on every corner of the earth. From the equator to the polar regions, in forests, swamps, deserts, tundras, mountains, glaciers, hot springs, and from the highest point on Earth along the Himalayan mountains to the deepest parts of the sea. Less excitingly, they can also be found in your backyard, where you can usually find them in common moss, lichens, and ferns feeding on natural detritus in your undergrowth. In fact, if you own a microscope, you can observe tardigrade behavior up close and personal via just finding a piece of moss and soaking it in some spring water in a petri dish and then taking a look. Although the scientific community has long known about tardigrades since 1773, it is somewhat of a mystery how they manage the amazing feat of cryptobiosis, that is, the ability to almost completely halt their metabolic processes, losing up to 97-99% to of their total moisture. When they encounter water again, they reanimate, with the current record being 120 years to reanimation. However, that particular creature simply moved a little and then died when it was reanimated. But when looking at spans such as a decade or two, most tardigrades are able to fully reanimate with no problem. For reference, the natural lifespan of a tardigrade is about a year unless they are dehydrated. One of the keys to this arty creature's success seems to be the presence of a cellular sugar tree hollows which preserves the membranes that form their bodies. Although hardly the answer to human suspended animation, scientists are looking at tree hollows as a viable way to preserve human eggs during freezing for later fertilization. In any event, when tardigrades dry up, they become tons, little capsules that are easily transported and dispersed over the earth via the winds, the oceans, or in an animal's gut. Yes, of course, they can survive there too. And if all of that isn't remarkable enough for you, well, consider that tardigrades can also survive as high as 5,000 grays or 500,000 rads of ionizing radiation. Though above 100,000 rads, it does seem to make them sterile. For reference, humans die at a mere 1 to 2,000 rads and will suffer significant damage with much less. In order to test some of the tardigrades' amazing abilities, in 2007, the European Space Agency launched the Photon M3 spacecraft, hurtling a capsule full of science experiments into the heavens. Its subjects included live tardigrades tardigrades who returned from space after orbiting the Earth for 12 days, all the while being subjected to the near vacuum of space and the full spectra of deadly solar and cosmic radiation. How did the water bears hold up? Well, it was no problem for a large percentage of them. About 68% of them were just fine and kept on ambling once back on Earth. For reference, besides surviving the near vacuum of space, some species of tardigrade can withstand up to 6,000 times atmospheric pressure at sea level. As noted at the beginning of this bonus fact, this is about six times more pressure than at the deepest point in our ocean. And I suppose that just leaves me to say that I, for one, welcome our new tardigrade overlords. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. We got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. When you're subscribing, hit that bell. Also, why not check out another channel I do? It's called Geographics. It's a geography-based channel. I am going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.